and we'll continue to go through that as we talk throughout the day. So uh, we'll come back to this and see what questions we've answered at the end of the day. So let's start looking at chapter five, which is going to be our tissues. You're probably thinking, well, how is this getting us into anatomy and physiology finally? All right, so up to this point, we have talked about the structure of the cell because everything that we are going to do, and hopefully into your 142, everything will be talked about at the level of that cell. And so the, if you remember the hierarchy of levels of organization, okay, cells are going to make up tissues. Tissues are going to make up organs. And then organs are going to make up organ systems. And that's the point you study in anatomy and physiology. So now we are at that level of organization. <clears throat> and that, of course, is going to bring us into the rest of these systems that we're going to do for part one. Now, in thinking about this organization. So far, our idea of a cell, all right, if you look back to the point that we have talked about so far, our idea of a cell has been this. Okay. That is not, believe it or not, that is not how all the cells of the body are going to be, okay? Because as we look at, say for example, an organ, okay? First of all, this is a very organized structure. Okay, so what this is telling me, these cells have a specific shape. This is where we're going to have to begin to think outside the box. And the tissues Anything that is the study of tissues and how they are working and so forth, um, that's termed histology, okay? People who actually, and, and, there, and it's a huge area of science, okay? The study of tissues is histology. Tissues are made of cells. We're trillions of those. Actually, I don't even know if anybody knows the amount of numbers, the, the, the amount. So now, what we're going to learn. The classification of the tissues of the body, it is now going to be based on structure of those cells. What is their composition? What is their makeup? What is their extra cellular matrix? What is their matrix? So if we look at tissues of the body and the cells and how we are going to classify them. They are going to fall into one of these categories. 
they will be either epithelial, connective, muscle, or nervous. So these trillions of cells will fall into one of these categories. Histology, because we're dealing with cells for the most part, I mean, the egg, okay, you can kind of see, but cells of the body are microscopic. I can't stand here and look at this and be like, oh, well, there's my bone cell, there's my muscle cell, there's my nerve, I can't do that, okay? So it's a microscopic study. Anybody in here ever had a biopsy? Or known somebody that had one? Okay. Um, they're done on a regular basis. They can be done on any of the tissues of the body. For example, I had an aunt who had a brain infection. They actually went in, yeah, through the skull, hole in her skull, and got some of that tissue to biopsy. So they can biopsy anything just about. <clears throat> it's removal <clears throat> of some of that tissue for diagnostic purposes to try to determine what's wrong. <clears throat> At the time of death, <clears throat> I'm sure you guys have heard of an autopsy. And this is done to try to determine what the cause of death was. As these tissues form, it is the germ layers that will give rise to these tissues. All right. Egg and sperm meet. Fertilization occurs. We get one cell making two, two making four. You begin to form blastula, gastrula, all those different types of stages. All right. And you end up with what's termed germ layers. Now, what that is going to mean, okay, germ is letting us know it will give rise to, all right? So, in other words, it is that most primitive layer. So, we end up getting three germ layers. They are termed endo, meso, ecto, derm. Endo means to the inside. Meso means anything on the middle. Ecto meaning outer. Therefore, it's, it, it, it gives rise, if you think about the inner part of the body, middle part of the body, outer part of the body, that's what they're giving rise to. For example, ectoderm, outer layer, skin. Okay? Whoops, wrong side. Skin. Then if you think about that being ecto out, okay? Everything else has got to work to the inside, okay? Middle layer, we're going to get stuff like muscle, bone, blood. Inner layer, stuff like digestive tract linings, derivatives, organs, okay? Each one having special cell structures. What do you mean by derivatives? Oh, if you think about in the digestive tract, intestines, colon, gallbladder. So, we end up with those four types, those four categories. This is one of those videos from uh, the website, the Connect. And like I said, I mean, overall, they're pretty good. When
when multiple cells organize into a group, they form a tissue. There are four basic types of tissues in the body. Epithelial, nervous, muscle, and connective. Epithelial tissues cover and line body structures and exhibit specialized shapes and functions. For example, in the small intestinal lining or mucosa, a single layer of cells called enterocytes absorbs nutrients through surface extensions called microvilli. Nervous tissue in the brain, spinal cord, and nerves consists of specialized cells called neurons and neuroglia, the neuron supporting cells. Inside the brain, gray matter contains neuron cell bodies and their extensions, known as dendrites, and various neuroglia, such as astrocytes and oligodendrocytes. White matter contains axons, which are long fibers extending away from neuron cell bodies. Axons carry chemical and electrical impulses to body tissues, such as muscle. Muscle tissue is classified as smooth, cardiac, or skeletal muscle. For example, skeletal muscle fibers form whole muscles that attach to bones and move the body. Cells called myocytes containing contractile protein fibers comprise muscle. Connective tissues include bone, cartilage, ligaments, tendons, and blood. For example, cartilage is comprised of proteoglycan molecules in a gelatinous matrix surrounding a meshwork of collagen fibrils that impart tensile strength and chondrocytes that help maintain the tissue's integrity and flexibility. Two or more tissues that work together for a common purpose form an organ. For example, in the heart, cardiac muscle tissue in the ventricles contracts and pushes blood through the connected tissue valves into vessels lined by vascular epithelial tissue called endothelium. So <clears throat> hopefully seeing the different um, structures that were present, this is how we're going to have to think outside the box about these um, cellular structures. So the first category that we're going to look at, epithelial tissue. It is made up almost entirely of cells. What that means, the extracellular matrix is scant. There is not a lot of the extracellular matrix, meaning fluids outside the cell. Because epithelial tissue, the areas of the body where it is found, we are needing it to make a barrier. We need it to be watertight, but at the same time, in certain areas of the body, we need it to allow materials to move. So the structure of epithelial tissue, it's going to cover 